So welcome back. I was thinking about making a video about uh, the Reddit stocks, as I'm going to uh, call them. So all the stocks that have been affected by the chat in, in Reddit. And the most famous one is, of course, GameStop. But there are a handful of stocks that have been affected. Actually, I had to limit my list, otherwise this video will become way, way too long. And um, my idea is just to look at these stocks from a technical um, technical analysis perspective to see where they basically have been in the past and uh, where they are at this moment. Why is it that people have been shorting them and uh, what the effects of uh, buying these stocks has been the last three or four weeks. So, so this has basically dominated the news the last week or two. So what has happened is basically you have a platform, Reddit, where you have millions of uh, people on a certain, um, certain uh, group that have come together in order to buy different kinds of stocks. And the effect of this is basically that these stocks have completely exploded to the upside with uh, basically fundamentals going out the window. So these traders are not looking at what the earnings of these companies or anything. They're just looking at um, certain stocks that hedge funds and other institutions have been shorting and which they are basically taking advantage of. And it's a brilliant move. Uh, whether or not it is legal or not, we'll probably find out because there are probably going to be a lot of lawsuits and so on about this. It sounds like a um, pump and dump strategy, which I, as I understand, is fairly illegal. So the effects of this has basically been that Robinhood, which most of these traders have been using in order to make them uh, these trades, has limited the trading abilities for most of traders on, on for all of the traders basically on on its platform i'm completely against that i think if you uh, create a platform like robin hood and you ask people to join so they can basically trade then they have to trade um uh, fair and square basically free from any uh, interaction by the platform itself that is utterly completely wrong from the platform to say that yes these are the rules now but if if uh, if you're doing too well then we are basically going to change the rules uh, that should be completely illegal and it will probably also um, be illegal uh, there are also lawsuits um, on the way at the moment about those things but on the screen at the moment we are going to look at GameStop Corp so we're going to look at where this uh, where this stock has been in the past and why technically people have been shorting it. So this is a uh, this is a company that basically sells computer games and consoles in the physical stores, and this industry has been slowly dying off for uh, quite some time. Um, give an example: Blockbuster is a similar store that basically went um, went bankrupt due to the fact that they did not innovate to the digital digital platform and Netflix and other companies basically took over uh, that um, market. So it was no need for them anymore. Um, the same goes for uh, GameStop. Is like most of, of, uh, of sales go on basically online today. If we go on, on, on my PlayStation, I don't go to the physical store and buy, buy my computer game. I go technically... When I have my PlayStation, I go into the internet in order to buy a game and so on. So the the use of these companies, most of them, um, isn't there anymore. And then you have some of them, for example, Nokia, that just didn't were too late in their innovation. They had massive amounts of of, of market share, and they just didn't innovate. And Apple and uh, Samsung basically took over that market. So We'll start by looking at um, GameStop and um, the highest is, I will go to the one hour chart, no, the one hour chart, the single chart. So we'll also have to look at the weekly. So, and go way, way, way back. So you can see basically, this is just ridiculous. 
um, the highest this stock was, was back in 2008. So back then it was trading at 64.91. So back in 2008, the, this kinds of store were basically all over the place. Uh, you could go and rent a, a movie at Blockbuster and you when you went to uh, buy a computer game or a console, you went to uh, these kinds of stores and so on. So they were very popular. And you can also see that that's the reason why uh, these um, this stock is so high. But since then, we have become more digital and people are buying more online. So it lost value, went all the way down to roughly, well, roughly here is the lowest point. So lost roughly around in this period from 2008 to 2020, um, 21, around, around 94% uh, of uh, the value of its share. So if you go all the way to January, it's Jan January 2001, the value of its share in the beginning of January 2001 was roughly $15.57 uh, uh, a share. So it had increased slowly from uh, from the basically the bottom of uh, 2000 and here was basically the bottom where we had the the coronavirus it was roughly 4.79 percent so give or take but if we just look at what happened in 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 january so we are here and it increased all the way up to 485 dollars a share so that's an increase of roughly 3,000, uh, 3, uh, and then said 32, uh, 32, uh, 32%. Sorry about that. So 3,032% increase in one month. So 30 eggs. So the problem that <laughs> occurred for, for many of these institutions that were short selling, that basically they're betting on the market going down. And when you all of a sudden have uh, your trade going completely the opposite way, like 30 times the opposite way, then you're basically squeezed out of the market and you start losing enormous amounts of money. And this has been absolutely horrible for the market uh, on Friday and Thursday and so on. It affected the market extremely because people have to um, cover their shorts. So they had to sell most of the really good things that were basically making profit, for example, Apple, Microsoft, all of these good companies that had fantastic earnings uh, last week, they had to sell them and um, basically to cover uh, their losses in, in most of these companies. So we can also see the volatility here. So we, from one day, for example, this is on Thursday, we went from a high of $484 and we went to a low of roughly $114 in one day. So, but if you look at the, at the moving averages, 20 exponential is basically the lows here. If you, get, if you look at that, that that way, if you look at the one hour chart, you can see that we went all the way down to the 50 moving average in the, in the one hour chart. Otherwise, that 20 exponential here in the one hour chart is holding really well. But if you look at, for example, the other technical indicators, for example, the MACD, the RSI, the Bollinger Bands, and so on and so on, and from that look at whether or not this is sustainable, uh, you could come to the clear conclusion, no, it's not. So fundamentally, this stock should not be increasing by 3,000%. There's, there's no reality behind that increase of three three thousand percent so when people start selling this and they will at some point start selling this it will basically fall back to its previous levels which is around three to four dollars this is not a stock that is going to increase uh, for years and years to come for in order to do that you have to have some kind of um basically um good business behind this. And this company has not do, been doing well, and that's the reason why people have been shorting it. Um, so this is just a pump in this um, uh, in this stock. And um, at some point, you're just going to see this fall apart. And um, 
the thing is that most people will lose heck of a lot of money when that happens. So they will be dragged into this now because it's on the news. It is everywhere like this is growing and growing and growing. And at some point, people are going to pull the plug. And I don't think that this is just retail investors. I think that there are also professional investors involved here. And usually they have their way. So at some point, they are going to say, okay, enough is enough. Let's just sell this now. We got our profit. And then it's going to fall back to, um, to uh, where it came from. But if you look at the, at the Bullinger Band, we are way outside here of the Bullinger Band. It's completely over, um, uh, overstretched. We are here in the RSI. It went all the way up to 100 in the RSI. You can see here the top on Thursday. So 103 in the RSI and then just fell. We're at 74 in the RSI now. It's still overbought. So yes, both of these are yelling that this is going to drop. So the question is where we are going to drop. We're trading at 325 at the moment. We can see that the 20 exponential is the bottom of this market. So pull back towards the 20 exponential that's roughly there. So a drop of 66%, that is very likely. That is very likely to, to occur. Um, I don't think that this is going to drop all the way down to, to $4. That's not going to happen. It's just going to... At some point, this is not going to be fun anymore and people will just leave this. So when they have gotten all out of it that they want, then they're basically going to leave it and then it's just going to slowly drop back to $4 or something like that. But at this point, it is completely overbought. It is something I would never, ever, ever buy into. Um, if you wanted to buy into it, and uh, then you should wait basically when it falls back to the 20 exponential. And that's a drop of... Uh, 65%. So around $113, that is where uh, you most likely should enter this market and nowhere basically else. So the next one on the list is probably the also the one that has got the second most coverage is um, entertaining holding. So we need to look at the weekly and we can see where this has basically been. So we'll go and look at the one hour, one chart first. And you can see that if you look at the weekly. So this stock has um, it basically topped back here in 2015. It was trading at the $36 back then. And then it dropped all the way down here in uh, this is basically at the heart of the coronavirus and to roughly $2.07. So it lost 92.5% in this period from 2015 to the beginning of 2020. In five years, it lost 92.5% of its value. And uh, this is basically the reason why people are, are shorting this uh, because it has been, been just going down and down and down. And um, people were thinking, and yes, that's basically the reason. But if you go back to January, so this is the beginning of January, it was trading at 1.89%, and it went all the way up to the highest here of 20.43%. So an increase of $969, $9 percent, sorry, 969% in, well, four weeks. So an absolutely enormous increase. And you can see that we basically crossed all of these moving average. We even crossed the 300 moving average and then pulled back. So at the moment, this is trading in the weekly chart is trading above the 200 moving average. In the one hour chart, we are basically above everything here. So if you look at the technical indicators where we basically are for the daily chart, so we are not overbought at this point. We were overbought here. So we were at 90, 98 um, in the RSI. So we were significantly overbought. We are on the edge of being overbought. But from the highs here, it has dropped quite substantially. We fell from the highs here of $20.63 all the way down to $6 in just two days. So that's a drop of 
percent, and then it increased, increased again roughly 135 percent. So the volatility here is just enormous, just ridiculous. Never ever seen anything like this whatsoever. So at this point, we can say where is uh, where is the bottom here? I would say the 20 exponential is the bottom. So a roughly roughly 5.7 uh, 5.79 dollars a share is basically the bottom here so if we take the top of this all the way down to the that's a, a decrease of roughly 60 percent so so this could easily drop 60 percent from its previous high now so yes you can see how extreme these moves are in just a very short, um, short, um, short time period. So, the thing that I think is going to happen here is that people will start looking at every single stock that has been in a downtrend, and uh, then they will start buying it, thinking that this probably will be the next stock that will increase by a thousand percent, and. Uh, this entire move of Reddit chat will most likely come to an end at that point because it works when you're focusing on probably one or two stocks. That works. But when you're going to focus on probably 20 to 30 or 50 stocks, then you will not have the same effect. You probably move it a little bit, or you definitely not, definitely not have the same effect like you're having now on these uh, few stocks. So just keep that in mind. It works because you're acting um, as a group, but as soon as you basically increase the, the portfolio of, of those stocks that you're trying to increase, then your momentum is basically going to stall. So let's look at BlackBerry. So, BlackBerry was a very, very famous, is a very, very famous phone maker and had, well, at one point, the biggest share of the market. So, back here in 2008, everybody was walking around with a BlackBerry. The same goes for another stock that's on the list, is basically Nokia. Um, back in 2000, Nokia was basically dominated dominating the cell phone world. Everybody was walking around with a Nokia. So in this is 2000 and uh, this basically in May 2008, the stock was at 152. And since then it dropped to uh, roughly $2.87 uh, a share. So since 2008 to 2020, it lost 97% of its value. So this was the heart of the crash of the coronavirus and then it rallied quite a bit it rallied up towards roughly 4.46 dollars and in january january is basically here it was trading at roughly 6.67 dollars so in january it increased all the way up to 30.30 dollars so roughly 331 percent so if you look at the technical indicators for this, uh, it has fallen since, uh, but uh, this is a weekly chart. It has fallen since. It has fallen towards the 20 exponential, and we're right at the 20 exponential. So whether or not this is one of those that is going to bounce at the 20 exponential, it is not that the fundamentals of the economy. It will depend on uh, what this group is targeting. And as I said, the bigger this portfolio basically becomes, the more companies you try to affect, the less likelihood of, of a bounce in any of these things. So, so that is that is most likely what is going to happen here. But at the moment, we are at 61. It's not overbought at this point. Um, momentum is to the downside. MACD is going down. The stochastic is going down. Uh, we're heading towards the middle of the Bollinger Band. And also the CCI is falling. Well so momentum for at least this stock is is declining. It increased roughly 350 percent, and since then we have decreased 
uh, by roughly 52%. So, so last half of its value from its previous basically highs. So this is BlackBerry. This is also uh, a former um, monster maker of uh, telephones that did not innovate fast enough. It basically held on to its uh, design for way too long until and then Samsung and smartphones and Apple basically came along and took over this market. So let's look at Express. So as you can see, we can go way back here in the weekly chart. We can see that we were trading at the very highest back in 2012 at $27. Since then, it went all the way down to roughly 0 0.57 dollars it lost roughly 97.29 percent in this period in an eight year period it almost lost 97 percent so we bought them here in the in november and since november it has increased by roughly 2350 percent so 23x 23.5x and only in January, here, we have increased roughly 1,524%. So at this point, uh, if you look at the weekly chart, it has started the fall. It had a monster fall in on Thursday, fell roughly 75%. So the company loses uh, three, quarter of, uh, three quarters of its value in one trading day. That is a company that... Yeah, that's a stock that shouldn't be basically going bankrupt, but then it bounced, uh, bounced again. So we went from here all the way to 7.7, uh, .7, uh, roughly 118% from Thursday, the bottom of Thursday to, to, um, to Friday's end. At this point, it is not overbought on the daily. It is significantly overstretched here in the Bollinger Band. So this could fall towards the 20 exponential, which is roughly here. That's a loss of roughly 59.27%. And yes, so you can see the same trend. It is basically companies that uh, once were doing good, had a fairly high valuation on their stock that have been decreasing over time. And um, people are taking advantage of basically um, the very low levels of these stock and also that people have been shorting them over a long period of time so we can look at probably the second last we have two left this is cost and you can just look at this so we can also go to months and the highest this stock was trading back in the days was here this was 2006 it was trading at $17 a share. Since then, it fell all the way down to roughly 0.8%. So it lost from 2006 to 2020, roughly 94.79%. Uh, so what happened in January is that we went from roughly $2.74 a share all the way up to four to hundred and forty two dollars a share so i don't know why people are talking about, about but gamestop but actually this stock has do, been doing much better than gamestop it has increased by four thousand two hundred and ninety four percent in one month so this is the same increase that like uh, netflix had from interior 10 years time this has done it in only one month so just keep that, keep that in perspective. If you look at the daily chart for, for this stock, it hasn't declined yet. So it is significantly overbought. We're at 82 at the, in the RSI. In the, in the, in the Bullinger Band, we can see how uh, far we went outside of the Bullinger Band. So basically, of the top of the Bullinger Band to the top of this counting here, that's roughly 246% um, above of that line so it, fairly ridiculous so it could have fallen from this point all the way to the to the middle of the bullion band and that's roughly 91 percent so uh, yes it is it's it's crazy how how 
fast these stocks have been growing. And of course, people that have been shorting this, they were absolutely crushed. They were basically blown apart uh, by this increase in the market. And therefore, they had to basically